host Gary Fox here, and tonight we're going to talk about something called the Fourier series, and we're going to take that a whole lot further. Uh, unfortunately, I am tied up having to uh, do some home improvement projects, none of which are really all that interesting, and I don't think you all want to see videos of me painting and uh, fighting the floor and some other things. So what I'm going to talk about is a little bit of theory here, and then we will have some uh, actual projects that we will do with it. But uh, unfortunately, you're going to get a little bit more theory talk, which you may or may not like. I think you will like this. So anyhow, we're going to talk about Fourier series, and Fourier series is named after this gentleman that I pulled up up here uh, from the Wikipedia site. And uh, he's a f Frenchman, and uh, he was ba way back in 1768 to 1830, so he was kind of part of the, uh, the Renaissance period of time when everybody was waking up and all kinds of brilliant ideas were happening. So uh, he was a mathematician and also a physicist. So anyhow, we're going to talk about what he discovered. And what he discovered was that any periodic waveform, any waveform that repeats, is actually made of a fundamental frequency and sines and cosines of multiples of that frequency called the harmonics, even their integer multiples. So in other words, there's the uh, a fundamental frequency and then two times that frequency three times that frequency, possibly, four times that frequency, five times that frequency, and so on and so forth. All of those are uh, sinusoids, sine, sine waves, either sines or cosine waves. And that will be the next talk. I'll tell you why that it includes both sines and cosines. But for today, we're going to uh, pull up a graph that I've created, and I'll show you the boring details of how I created this graph. But what I start out with is a fundamental frequency, and I'm showing two, two periods of that, two complete waveforms. So I start with a sine wave, and I start at time zero. I gave it a frequency of one hertz, so I do it for uh, two seconds. One hertz is one cycle per second. 2 hertz, 2 cycles of that would take 2 seconds to do it. Okay, what I'm going to do is, on this particular one, I'm going to add, uh, I picked the wrong one, so let's pick another one. Um, so I want to start with this one first. Okay, same graph as what I started with on the, the other one. And we have the fundamental, the same deal where it's 1 hertz. It could be 100 hertz, it could be whatever frequency, but I picked something that was nice and easy to work with, 1. <laughs> okay. Now let's say that we have a third harmonic. And so I will turn this one on. And this third harmonic is one-third the amplitude of the, uh, the fundamental or the first harmonic, if you want to look at it. The fundamental is the first multiplied by one. This one, you multiply the frequency by three. You see there was three complete cycles done at the same amount of time that there was one cycle done in the, uh, the other one. And its amplitude is only one-third. Well, what happens if we add those two together? So I will go here. And I want to change this to 1 th to 3. And then I'm going to turn it on. And we get this waveform right here. Wow, you know, that's kind of neat. It looks like the, the tooth waveform, I guess. Well, let's add the fifth. So I'll put in the fifth harmonic. And it's five cycles in the period of time that it takes to do one cycle of the fundamental. And it has a, a amplitude of one-fifth. 
that's what this one has. Now we could have amplitudes that's different than that, but for where I'm going with this one, it's one fifth. And so let's see what that'll look like. I will now do the one through five. And you see, I now got the Casper the Friendly Ghost waveform. That's kind of interesting. Let's uh, let's add another one. So we add the seventh harmonic. And again, the way this one's going to work, we're going to take one seventh the harmonic, one seventh the amplitude, and we'll see what we end up with as we do that. One through seven, and we got a few more bumps in the middle. And uh, things are starting to develop here. It's kind of interesting what's going on. Let's go to the ninth. And I didn't turn it on. And you see things are getting kind of junky looking in there. But the ninth is one ninth the amplitude of the first one. And we'll look at what it produces. One to nine. And it's getting a little steeper. It's a little wider. And it has a little less bumps on it than what it did before. Let's go all the way up to the 13th. I'll turn on the 11th and the 13th. And it's gotten really confusing in here. Let's turn off a couple of the others. Uh, we're still adding them, but we're going to uh, not look at them. So I'll turn off the 3rd. I'll turn off the 5th. And the 7th. So we can see the others a little bit better. Okay, it's still confusing to look at. But now let's see what that is when I add all those together. So 1 through 13. It's getting wider. And it's a little less bumpy than what it was before. What the heck? I'm going to go and check it out with... This one is ran with, uh, and I picked the wrong number there. This one is ran with everything all the way up to the 101st harmonic. And let's change our time so that we can see what's happening there a little bit more. Change my x-axis. Maximum time I'll make uh, 0.5. So we'll see a quarter of the wave waveform and you see it it picked up really fast and gets very small bumps but we still have this, this little overshoot at the start it's what people would call ringing is what happens at the start of that and if you imagine this thing let's make it one instead of 0.5 so we look at just one period if you imagine this was a hammer or something and it's having to swing really fast from this position here up to this position uh, it would probably overshoot and vibrate for a little bit till it would settle down and then it would have to move real fast back in the opposite and it would again overshoot and then uh, bounce around a little bit so anyhow what we're creating is we're heading toward a square wave and uh, you see we did that with nothing but sine waves Let's do one more, and all I did was the odd harmonic on that. And everything was a sine wave. I didn't do any cosines in this one. Uh, and we're not going to do any cosines in the next one either. But let's open up a new one, so we'll close this. I'll save it, even though it's really got nothing interesting, nothing different. And now I'm going to do evens only, where that was nothing but the odds. And evens is not very interesting. I goofed up. Let's do evens and odds. Okay, what this one did, I uh, will add, uh, this is the fundamental again. Same deal. I take two seconds, two complete waveforms. And uh, I have the second harmonic, and the second harmonic has an amplitude of one half. Basically, one divided by the harmonic, harmonic's frequency, or harmonic's multiple, I guess is the correct term. 
So this is the second harmonic. It takes two of them to complete in the time it takes one to complete this. And now let's do what the uh, sum is. And uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and add the third harmonic first. I forgot what I'm doing here. And so now I have three harmonic. The, this one takes does three complete cycles in the time it takes this one to do one cycle. But it's only one third. And let's add those together. So we'll add those. And we're getting this kind of funny bumpity looking thing, but it's got this interesting shape where it gets real high and then it kind of heads back down. So let's go a little further with that. Let's turn off the second and third to unjunk the, uh, the view here. So we can see just our fundamental and then our sum waveform. We'll sum now from 1 to 5. And you see they're starting to straighten out a little bit here. And we got a few a few more bumps in it, but we got smaller bumps. 1 to 7, same thing happens. 1 to 9, 1 to 13. And you see it is starting to make kind of a heading toward a straight line. Well, let's go all the way up to 101, and uh, you see that it's making a pretty good looking little uh, ramp waveform right here. It jumps up real fast, and then it slides back down to the opposite, and then it jumps up real fast and does the same thing over and over. Again, if I look at this a little closer, if I change my X value... So the max time is 0.5. So we're looking at one quarter of that. You see that it uh, does have some overshoot here, but once it gets toward the, uh, the line part, it's getting relatively small bumps right there. That was up to the 101st harmonic. That harmonic would only be 1, 100, one over 101 of the uh, value. Okay, that was evens and odds. Well, I just got curious. What would happen if I do just the evens? So we will close this one. And yeah, I'll save it just to keep it quiet. Um, now we'll do evens only. And uh, on this particular one, I believe I'm looking at... Okay, that's the, time, that's the first graph there, time and fundamental. The second graph, I'm looking at all 101 uh, of those. And that doesn't make a very pretty waveform, but it's interesting. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just got curious. Again, what I did for each one of those, each multiple, was uh, 1 over one over 2, 1 over, one over uh, 4, 1 over six and so on and so forth and I only did the even harmonics and I uh, went up to the hundredth because 101 wouldn't be even so anyhow that's kind of an interesting thing of what what a uh, Fourier series is it's adding things together now later on we're going to learn how to uh, do the inverse Fourier series which is called the, in, the Fourier transform that involves a little bit of calculus, but we're going to do it with just a program. Let's talk a little bit about how I generated the data for these graphs. So let's go back to the uh, square wave. Okay, if I view Windows and I turn on this data navigator view, you see I've got all these columns of data, and I had them all from a uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and we'll look at the, this case, the second, whoops, uh, let's see, I think I right click, and I want to edit data, and you see it, on the second, everything is zero, because that's what I used for that, we don't have a second harmonic, uh, but when we get to the third harmonic, 
when we look at the numbers, you see I do have numbers, which is what I graphed earlier. Okay, how did I generate all this? You see that there's 2,020 points in each one of these columns. And then these columns right in here are where I'm doing the summing of, of things, which is heading toward this. And the one that says all is where I summed all 101 points for each data point on here. It's actually a sum of 101 harmonics which includes the fundamental. So how did I generate that? Well, what I did to generate it is that I ran a program. I actually wrote a little program. And this program, I calculated the coefficients, and then I calculated each and every one of those sine waves. Something I wouldn't want to do by hand, but the computer does it really fast because it just kept rotating, doing a loop and doing each and every one of those. And then what it did, it wrote a uh, CSV file, which is a comma separated variables. And it wrote that CSV file, and uh, that is what we pulled into this other program called Views. I have talked about Python, which is the programming language. And uh, you will find something about that on my website, and I'll try to put it in the uh, video notes. And I also talked about this program called Views, which is what I'm running right now with the pretty picture of how you can use Views to create these pictures. And uh, that I think I did with a, a YouTube video. Again, I'll have links in the, uh, in the video notes. Anyhow, I hope you find this interesting. There's more to come on it. And uh, we will continue on with this. This is something I know fairly well. I don't have to study before I produce a video or a blog on it. So uh, all I have to do is just draw the pretty pictures and write the little programs. And uh, that's why I'm doing this for right now while I'm overloaded doing a little bit of work around my house. Anyhow, appreciate you watching. Hopefully you get something out of this. There is a whole lot more to come. And I think you will enjoy this series. Scary Fox of Create and Make. Thank you.